Hi, I'm Andy Webb from BeCleverWithYourCash.com. Welcome back to my channel. If you haven't already, please do hit that subscribe button and that little notification bell as well, because that means you won't miss any of the future videos that are released that will help you make money, save money, and better manage your money. And that's exactly what today's video is all about. It's how to make sure that when you are managing your money, you're managing your accounts the best you can. And by accounts, I mean every single digital account you've got your usernames, your passwords, any of the data in there, it needs to stay secure, okay? Any kind of chance of someone else getting hold of that via breaches, data breaches or hackers, and it could lose you a lot of money. So here we go, this is how to make sure you've got a strong and secure password. Now, even though people know they should be having different passwords for all the different accounts, most people still just have that single account or maybe a few variations of it and they use it for lots and lots and lots of different things. Now they might be all right with that, that might be perfectly fine and they might have got away and never had their data uh, breached in any way. But actually a lot of you will find that you have. And the great way to find out about if your data is safe or whether someone potentially has got hold of it uh, is to use a website called Have I Been Pwned, P-W-N-E-D. You go into there and you type in your email address. Whack that in and it will tell you every single major breach where your email address appears. And this isn't just sort of random things. There are some big, big, big companies in there. So looking at my email address, I've seen that it's been revealed uh, in MySpace, Dropbox, LinkedIn, you know, big guys, as well as some random things. I've got no idea what the hell they are, but my email address was in that breach. And then if you've got your email address, they've probably got other information as well. Could have your address, could have your phone number, uh, could have all sorts of data. But the one which they probably have got, if they've got your email address in these breaches, is they've probably got your password. If they've got your password and they've got your username, it means even if the account that's been hacked is pretty innocuous and there's no other extra details in there, they could well use that data to access something much, much more important. Your banking, for example, uh, your Amazon account where you've got your card details, you're often making purchases, your social media accounts and things like that. Your email, you know, think about how things are in your email. Uh, really, really, really important stuff to keep secure. So have a look at that website, Have I Been Pawned, and see if your data has been breached. The next step from there is to find out what has been compromised. Now, a good way of doing this one that I use is over on Google, uh, passwords.google.com. And if you have used Google Chrome as your default browser on your computer and on your phone, it's a very, very good chance that you've saved some passwords and usernames just for ease, yeah? So when you have to click in, it's already there stored. You don't have to type it in yourself. Loads of us do that, okay? And that's not necessarily a huge problem as long as your computer and your phone themselves have got their own passwords that no one knows. So when you uh, leave the desk at work, for example, you make sure you put it to uh, screensaver comes up so no one can go in and access your stuff. When you've got your phone, you make sure it's always locked down and the only way to open it is with a pin or your face or your thumbprint, whatever it might be. And again, nobody else knows that then you can still have some of this also remembered data in there for some accounts if you want. Personally, I wouldn't do that for anything like banking um, but, or, you know, or email, but you can for other things. Anyway, right, if, you go, if you've got this data stored with Google, really, really easy. Uh, there's a little option here where it will check your passwords. So when I did this, I clicked through and it found out that I've actually got quite a number where the data, where the actual password is the same as one that's been breached somewhere. Now, when I looked at that list, I found that some of those things are for accounts I don't use anymore and I forgot that I even had them. My 18 to 25 rail card, for example, I'm 40 years old now. I haven't used that for 15 years. So again, I forgot that, that one uh, had an old password, one that I used to use a lot of the time. And that was quite a common uh, theme within that list. But there were still a few in there which I've overlooked. I had to change them. And I've done that now. Because again, they're ones which I can use on a regular basis. The ones that might have uh, my credit card details, my banking details stored in there. Things like booking.com, for example, that was one which I hadn't changed. So it's really, really important you go through and everything that's in there, you make it a priority to change that password. Okay, really, really, really important. And if it's something you don't use anymore, like that 18 to 25 account for me, rated rail card account for me, delete it, you don't need it anymore. Close down those accounts, so that means there's less of a chance uh, of your data being breached, okay? And the information is no longer there for it to be hacked. You also find on Google a couple of extra different things. It will tell you whether you've used the same password quite a lot as well. So that includes, for me, those ones, those compromised ones, but it means I've also got uh, a number of different passwords which I've used for a number of different accounts. Again, if one of those was to be compromised, that means 
all the others with that same password would be at risk as well. And there's also a list where it's really simple passwords because that's another danger, something very, very, very easy to guess or for computers to crack. It's not just people guessing and typing stuff in, computers can get involved as well. If they're easy, then they're also at risk. So next step, changing those passwords. Now you really want to have something that's super, super secure. I said you don't want something that's simple, you don't want something that uh, lots of people have got. Uh, and one way you can test your password ideas is something called howsecureismypassword.net. I absolutely love it when you have these websites which do exactly, uh, same website addresses are exactly what you want them to be. So how secure is my password? You go into there and you can type in uh, anything you want and it will tell you how secure it is. So here's a little example uh, where I tried out a few different things. I wrote the word cheese. I don't know why it came to mind, maybe I'm hungry. I put cheese in and it showed bizarrely that is one of the top 90 passwords in the world. Cheese, okay? Some people literally just have cheese as a password. I don't know how they manage that because most places want you to have six, uh, seven or eight characters, don't they? But anyway, cheese. Uh, but you can make it a little bit more complicated. Uh, you could, I put cheese cracker, okay? Now that was harder to crack, um, but still didn't wasn't the most secure password. So I added some numbers. It's always really good, if you can, to have words and numbers in there. Cheese cracker 20, again, not the, I would have thought the most secure password, but it came up pretty good. To make it even more secure, I added a character, uh, cheese cracker 20 asterisk. Again, I'm never gonna use this password, but this is just a random one I thought of just then. Really, really, really secure. Okay, so that shows the, the kind of thing you need to be going to, and you can test it and work out, is it a decent password? Is it a safe password for you? And there are some of the things you should be thinking about, yeah. So uh, it's not a single word. Uh, you should be adding in, uh, ideally, I didn't do it there, but uppercase and lowercase and mix them. Having a number in there, having some characters in there, they all make something much, much more secure. So once you've found your secure password, you'll be fantastic. I'm just gonna go and change all my passwords to that. But you can't do that, can you? Because if you do that, again, you're at risk. If that new password is compromised, then all your accounts are at risk. So really what you should be doing, and you might be thinking this is impossible, okay? You need to have a random password for every single account you've got. Now, I when I do, just on Google, I've got more than 200 different accounts stored, and that's not everything. So that's kind of a bit of a task, isn't it? You don't want to resort to writing them down, okay? Because if you write them down, then there's a risk if a burglar comes around and your books with your computer and they steal your computer, they've got all your account details, yeah? They might, in fact, it's probably more valuable for them to take that book of passwords than it would the actual computer. And I'm sure they, they're onto that and they will look for that kind of information. So you should be thinking about getting an online password manager. Now there are a few of these out there, there's one called Dashlane, there's one called One Password. The one that I use is called LastPass. Uh, the reason I've gone for this one is because there's a free option uh, that works really, really well for me. Uh, you are sort of extra paid things you can get, which means you can share them within families and different usernames and so on. Uh, but LastPass works really, really well for me on the free option. And essentially what it is, it is an online vault of your usernames and your passwords. There's, you can add extra information in there as well, you can add notes, you can add in all sorts of bits and pieces. But primarily, if you've got whatever your, the, the website, your login and your password in there, and the way you access it is through a master password. So you have a single password to get into LastPass. And once you're in there, you can cut and paste out your username, cut and paste out your passwords into the account you want to log into, or even better, on Google Chrome, there's like a little, uh, browser plugin you can get on the top. So if I'm browsing the internet and I go to a website I need to log into, I just hit that little button, it pops down. I say, ask it to populate my login information. I type in my master password and it's automatically put in there. Same thing on my phone. I've got a LastPass app on here, which is connected. So it's the same information that's in there. It all syncs up in, in real time. When I need to open an app or open up an account on a website browser, I can hit a little thing that takes me through to LastPass. And again, with my phone, I can just look at it because this one's got a facial recognition. Uh, if you've got a thumbprint, fingerprint sensor, you can press that and that would populate the data. Or again, you can type in the master password uh, and get the information from there. But really, really, really simple. And it means I literally only have to remember one password. That's it. Now you might be worried about that. You might be thinking, hang on, but what happens if LastPass or Dashlane or any of these kind of password managers, they're compromised? And yeah, absolutely there is a risk because then all of a sudden all your uh, information is available to other people. But this is their job. Their it, whole thing, their whole business model is about protecting your data. So they were taking it very, 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 very seriously. It would be much, much, much harder for anyone to crack that data than it will be anywhere else, okay? This should be sort of the top level of that kind of encryption. 
So I would definitely recommend having a look at those and say, I use LastPass because it's free. Uh, and then what you need to do is once you're in there and they ha have similar to that Google feature, they have that option for you to sort of check which passwords have been compromised. There is an option within there to let it automatically change some passwords. It won't do all of them, but it automatically let you change uh, that process, makes it a lot easier. There's an option for it to generate a random password because as good as that how secure is my password website is, if you're having to think up different passwords randomly every single time for every single account, it's gonna take a while. So you might wanna use, and there are lots of these online, say LastPass has one, Google has it, but all sorts of options which will randomly generate a password which you can uh, stick and paste into, uh, your new, into your account, or you can, let's say, let LastPass do a lot of it for you. And yeah, do you know what? This is gonna take some time, but it's really important that you do this, okay? Go through change everything, get it secure. The stuff like banking, like your email, set up two-factor authentication, which means you're gonna get a text message, you're gonna get, I have to go on to some, another kind of app just to make sure that that really, really is difficult for anyone to get hold of because they're like the most important ones, aren't they? But once you've done it and if you keep doing it, you shouldn't need to do it again. It's just like one intense job, but it's probably one of the most important things you can do to protect your data and therefore protect your money as well. I'm Andy Webb. Do check the notes below because all those websites I've talked about are linked through to them there. There's more information, of course, over on BeCleverWithYourCash.com as well. If you haven't already, please do hit that thumbs up button. It really makes a big, big difference to helping other people find this video. Until next time, cheers.